Hello everybody, Joel here from Golf Monthly. I hope you're well and you join me here at the stunning Marquess course at Woburn Golf Club where a special treat for you, well for me really more than anything, in that I've been lucky enough to be hitting the new Ping Blueprint Irons. It is their first kind of out and out blade. It's a 100% forged club. It's made from 8620 carbon seal so it's going to provide a soft feel and this iron is really all about shot making and precision so being able to manipulate the ball flight left and right right to left up and down this is the iron that's going to do that and that's what tour players demand they're very precise with their ball striking uh, and obviously you need to be when you're losing a blade like this it's definitely ping's most compact iron down behind the ball really narrow sole width thin top line short blade lengths as well so it's not for the faint-hearted that's for sure i've got a four iron a seven iron and a pitching wedge that i'm going to test here on the golf course, we've got, also got some data with the 7-iron as well to compare it against irons like the I-Blade, which is one of their smaller cavity back irons, as well as the G700, which is right at the other end of the spectrum in terms of distance and forgiveness, just to see how the performance compares. But I think with this iron, it's less about the launch one of the data and more about the shots that you can hit with this club. Let's face it, this isn't an iron for your mid handicappers, high handicappers. This is only for the very best, but for some reason, they've sent some to me as well in the Dynamic Gold 120 S300 shaft. I've got a line grips here from Golf Pride and the Plus 4, so I'm really excited to test this iron out. While this might be Ping's smallest, least forgiving iron in their range, there is some forgiveness on offer, and that's from the tungsten weights that have been inserted in the toe, there's also some weighting in the heel as well uh, that's been added just to stabilize the face on those off center hits. But that said, it is still gonna provide the most workability and the, the least amount of forgiveness compared to other irons. So I was interested to see how this iron compares. So it's about time, I think, we start hitting some shots with it. <laughs> So before we take them out on the course, I do have some launch monitor data that I collected at Foresight Sports HQ on the GC Quad launch monitor. Hit the blueprint in the 7-iron, which is 34 degrees of loft. I compared it against the iBlade and the G700, so I feel like the iBlade is a good iron to compare it against to see you know, what extra the blueprint is giving us, if anything, compared to the iBlade. Um, interestingly, you look at the numbers here, and the ball speed and carry distance was very similar, but you can see you know, with the blueprint, the ball speed is jumping around a little bit more. So you got a range of 113.3 up to 118.9. So, you know, over five miles an hour difference in ball speed from my shortest hit to my longest hit in terms of ball speed. And conversely, the eye blade's a bit more consistent, 115 to 119. So not as big a jump there in ball speeds. You see the, the blueprint is launching and flighting the ball a little bit lower, which you would probably expect. You might expect the blueprint to spin a little bit more, but actually it was slightly lower. It's spinning at 6,054 compared to 6,158 with the eye blade. So slightly lower spinning from the blueprint. Like I said, lower ball flight, very similar average carry of 163 with the blueprint compared to 164 with the eye blade. So very similar performance. You'll notice for me, the dispersion with the blueprint definitely wasn't as consistent in terms of left to right dispersion. Bit more all over the shot with the blueprint as expected. You wouldn't expect it to be as forgiving uh, as the eye blade. Uh, and then conversely, you know, if you move into the G700, just to see how that compares, you know, this is two ends of the spectrum here from Ping in terms of iron performance. G700 is, has a ball speed of close to 124 miles an hour. So it's basically eight miles an hour quicker off the face. You know, this 7-iron is lofted, I think, down at 30 degrees, um, spinning at 4.8, carrying at 1.82. So it's around about 20 yards longer than the blueprint. So um, that's kind of the two ends of the spectrum of pin performance. But I think compared to iBlade, you know, there's not much in it. The blueprint doesn't reward slightly off-center hits. Uh, as much as the eye blade. There's clearly a bit more help there on those off-center hits, but the big question is, are you sacrificing anything by going to an eye blade compared to the blueprint? Let's find out. Well, so we've come to the 11th hole here at the Marquess course at Weber, which is a par five. Gonna hit some shots with a few different clubs, but I just wanna talk for you through kind of the looks of this iron and the feelings that you get over the ball. You know, this has all the hallmarks of an out and out blade in terms of the looks of it. There's basically no offset there. It's an extremely thin top line. I like the white bottom 
score line there helps kind of align the face a little bit more easily, um, but certainly doesn't inspire a great deal of confidence over the ball. You know, I currently play the TaylorMade P760, which has a compact uh, heel to toe blade length, but does have a much thicker top line. So, you know, it does have a less of a meaty look behind the ball. There's no question this iron. So, um, you know, in terms of the four iron, which I've got here, putting that down behind the ball, you know, that does look absolutely minuscule. It's not for the faint hearted. It really is for the very best ball strikers. Well, I'm gonna try and hit couple of different shots obviously the goal here with a pin back left is to try and shape the ball from right to left and obviously with a blade style club you would think it would be more easy to do so I'm going to try and replicate that here into this green so I'm going to aim just inside that tree uh, on the right edge of the green and see if we can draw one in and just see how that compares with the eye blade and the G700 which I've got uh, down on the floor here so first of all we'll start with the, uh, the blueprint which is obviously the hardest one of the three so it could be interesting Oh, it's absolutely all over it. Go, 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 go. Oh, just come up a fraction short. But uh, to be fair, I'm about 165 out. So there was a big hit with a 7 iron with this, uh, as we saw from the launch one of the data earlier. Um, but let's try it with the eye blade. Now, as we saw from the launch one of the data, you know, there really wasn't much in it in terms of average carry distance. But I'm just curious to see how easy it is to manoeuvre the ball with this iron compared to the to the blueprint and to see you know if there really is any difference in the ability to shape the golf ball because that is kind of what really sets uh, the blueprint apart from this as well as the feel so obviously that feels incredibly soft let's see how this iron compares similar amount of shape again just come up just short so clearly i'm a bit far away but you know, for me, the difference in feel between the blueprint and the eye blade, there's not much in it. I think the real difference has come on those off centre hits. I struck those pretty well. Um, but for me, the difference comes, you know, I feel like the blueprint is a little bit harsher on those off centre hits. And finally, I just want to see uh, how the G700 compares. Obviously, this is uh, a much stronger lofted iron. And I want to see, obviously, I'm coming up short here. So in theory, this should get there. Um, but also just the differences in feel and the flight because those ball fights were quite low with the 7 iron. I'm expecting this one to jump up a little bit higher, possibly even go over the green, but also be a bit more stable in terms of less curvature on the ball flight. So I'm probably going to aim a little bit closer to the pin here, expecting it to not curve as much. So much higher ball flight, less curvature, and it's got pin high on the green. So um, that kind of demonstrates the differences in real real world environment of the types of iron in pings range. You've got G700, getting the ball up in the air a lot easier, spinning a lot less, giving you more distance. Eye blade and blueprint, giving you a lot more shape to your shots uh, and a much lower ball flight, softer feel. But in terms of blueprint and eye blade, I think out on the golf course, I don't think you're gonna notice a great deal of difference between the two. Pretty happy with that one here, 17th at the Marquess, the par three. And I've got to say, the more holes I play with these ping blueprint irons, the more I actually like them. I think there's no question, you know, these aren't as forgiving as your eye blades. You know, you've really got to be very precise with your ball strike. And that's where I think the people that really should be considering a switch to irons like these is maybe if you're a low handicapper and iron play is your strength, if you're swinging it well, maybe you're, you know, scratch or below, these are the type of players that should be gravitating towards this club. You know, if you're a single figure golfer, there's not really much benefit in switching to a club like this compared to the eye blade, because for me, the feel is actually pretty similar, performance is pretty similar in terms of launch monitor data. And out on the course, maybe these irons do feel a little bit softer and maybe you can work the shots a little bit more, but I don't really think there was much in it compared to the eye blade. And for me, the eye blade, does give you a bit more forgiveness, a bit more consistency on those miss hits, which do feel a little bit harsher with this club. When you think about how small the hitting area is with these irons, especially the long irons, you know, you put the four iron down behind the ball and the ball's width is barely inside the width of the hitting area on the iron. So they're very intimidating down behind the ball as the irons get longer. And in fact, I actually hit a couple of shanks out on the golf course, which I'm not used to doing just because these irons are so small. But 
you know, if you're looking for the ultimate in feel, workability, and really crisp turf interaction, you know, these irons definitely deliver that, no question. And I actually find the smaller head actually focuses your mind a bit on the strike a little bit more, and that's definitely where you're going to get your best results. And, you know, that's, that's something to think about. You know, certainly for me, transitioning from I210 into iBlade, I found my ball striking actually improved. So maybe for you, switching into a really compact iron like this might improve your ball striking. And that's just something that you need to test uh, out on the course over a longer period of time. So the only other stumbling block with these irons, apart from the lack of forgiveness on offer, is the price. These come in at a very premium price point, £219 per club. So for a seven piece set, that equates to over £1,500 uh, for a set. So it is a lot of money. But if you're a player who wants the ultimate in feel and workability, you like to manoeuvre your ball flight, you want an iron that looks fantastic in the bag, this is unquestionably one of the best looking irons Ping or any other brand has made, to be fair, in the last few years. You know, hopefully this video has given you a good idea about what the performance of these Ping Blueprint irons is all about. We'd love to hear from you down below, so make sure you comment on this video and tell me what you think about these irons. Are you considering putting something like this in your bag? Are blades something that you've aspired to play but have resisted and maybe the time has come for you to bite the bullet and make that investment? I'd love to hear from you. But for now, from the stunning Mark West course here at Wyburn Golf Club, it's goodbye.